Josh Farley here, Redline Electric and Solar. I'm here with Mike Booth and Marcus Soto. Uh, we had the opportunity to share a, a, an amazing experience together by taking what we do best here in, the, in America, solar power, uh, to Malawi. And we just kind of want to show you a video, walk you through what, what we did, um, give you some feedback. A lot of you guys helped out uh, and, and was able to donate to help make this possible. Right. Um, we, we did this, we were actually able to connect um, it was it was a conversation we had over pizza, right? Pizza over at um, Fire and Pie, free yep. advertisement. But uh, Live Love is a nonprofit organization, and it's uh, in Malawi, and it's about community development. And uh, one night, my wife and I, Sherry, uh, we had blessings here. He was up at NAU getting his master's degree in community sustainability. He's actually from Malawi, raised in a village, actually went to college there, and so he's a success story unto himself. And now he runs Live Love Malawi there, and we had a chance to have dinner with Josh there. And they got to talking about solar, and Josh just so happened to have some solar panels. Yeah, I asked him for a picture of the solar that he had in his village, and he pulled up a picture of the smallest solar panel I'd ever seen. And I'm like, yeah. that's all you have? Like, my whole house is covered in solar. Um, which just, it's just, it was mind boggling to see what little power they use. Right. <clears throat> and we had just we had just taken a system off of a home where the homeowner didn't want the system anymore, so we had the panels available and we were able to to help out. So which is crazy. So when you think about things that line up kind of as fate would have it, um, you know, we had a customer call us said they didn't want solar, they need their roof replaced, and they wanted their solar removed. Um, and we're like, well, why? Why wouldn't you want to keep it? And they're like, well, it doesn't work. And you know, Marcus is the first one to say, "No, we can fix it. No matter yeah. like." Um, but they still refused. They wanted it off. Um, I think we found the problem when we were taking it off. Yep, we did. And Good. we still we asked the customer at that point, "Are you sure? We found the problem. We know what's wrong. We can put it back, and you're going to produce energy." And they just said no. So it sat in my warehouse, probably a good four four to six months before before we had dinner. Um, and you know, one thing led to another. Here we go. I got panels as big as you are. Right. Blessings, he's a small guy, you know. Um, I'm excited, yeah. And, uh, you know, just the, the conversation snowballed from there. Um, the next step was just kind of logistics. Okay, we got solar panels. Josh says you can have them if you can get them over there. Right. And so, uh, as fate would have it, um, Children of the Nation had a, a space in a container in California. We were able to uh, procure that uh, space in uh Red Line stepped up and, and got them over to California, and from there, it took a several week journey to get to Malawi. Yep. Every, everything was safe, and next thing you know, they're at the uh, college, just waiting for somebody to install it at that point. We borrowed a forklift from our neighbor to get them on the truck, um, you know, and then once, once we had word that they were there, we knew the pressure was on, like, then it was like, okay, now, now this is real, when are we going? Yeah. Um, and I had, you know, I do a lot of traveling. My wife's like, you're going to go out of town again. Like, Where, what are you doing? Um, no, she supports me. She supports us. She supports the cause. Um, you know, I thought it was really important to get over there and see for myself uh, what kind of impact we can make. <clears throat> I'll tell you, though, that was probably the longest trip I've ever taken my oh, my entire wow. life. Yeah. So I like to, I call it the longest Wednesday, um, just sure. because we left Wednesday, we left Wednesday morning. Wednesday night, about 11 o'clock. Okay, night. yeah, Wednesday night, um, we flew through JFK, JFK into hours. South Africa, oh yeah, five or six hours into JFK, right. and then South Africa, yeah. yeah, South Africa, that was like 16 hours, Right. and then, and then we, then from there we went, we flew into Malawi, Malawi which is yep. the one, you know, to give you some reference, it's one airstrip. And we're the one plane that was in that airport <laughs> at that time. Right. And and I think the next trip was us leaving the week after. Like there, I didn't think yeah. there's anything going in now there very often. <clears throat> um, but you know, words can't describe. Like so, we went from the airport. Where did we go? We went to the African Bible College where we were staying. Yep, right. We kind of found our lodging. They, we kind of put our, our stuff uh, down, and then yep. they they whisked us right out to the village. Um, Chimpampa. <clears throat> Chimpampa Village. So, yeah. if for those of you that never been there, I mean, the every everything is a village. Uh, there's just there's people everywhere. We're talking about a community th a third of the size of Arizona, but with three times as many people. Right. <clears throat> um, so it's hard to s to see where one village stops and the other begins because it's just continuous. Right. They kind of blend in. Living. It's like right. just continuous living space. 
Right, and it's a, it's a, it's a communal uh, culture, so they're, they're all kind of together. It's uh, where we're at was kind of a more of a rural area, so it's about uh, 20 kilometers outside of ABC, and uh, the last uh, two or three or so are just dirt road. I mean, there's no stoplights, traffic signs or anything. It's just dirt roads in the middle of nowhere. No landmarks, <clears throat> no nothing. All of a sudden, you crest this hill and there's a village. And right. uh, people are there, they're carrying water on their heads. They're uh, herding a, a few little oxen and some chickens mm -hmm. and stuff, and they've yeah. got some ground nuts that they're growing and different things like that. So it's, it's almost like stepping back in time 150 years easy. For uh, sure. Yeah. As, they, as they cook with corn husk and things like that. Yeah, no, and I mean, I saw some people do carrying things on their head that I, I couldn't imagine even having a tool to carry with, like right. or putting yeah. it on a truck or a wheelbarrow. Um, we got, so they, we, we went right into the village, and these, I mean, they knew we were coming. They were ready for us. They, these people were just filled with joy, singing songs. I've never, I've never been in a room so loud with, with smiles. Right. Um, I don't know. Tell, tell me your thoughts on it, Marcus. So it was just, it was just amazing that that they were so happy and so joyous about what was going on, and that even that we were there and. They, they really just wanted to invite us into their culture right. and allow us to see how they lived and what they did. And it was just amazing the things that they can get, up, get done with how little or how, just how complicated it would be to get, get certain things done. And they can just overcome it and, and do what they need to survive or eat or anything like that so it was just amazing yeah they're they're very it's called the warm heart of africa for a reason because the people there make the difference and so it's amazing they had never met these two gentlemen before i had been there before and all they knew is that they were going to come out and do something in the village they, obey the booth they don't even <laughs> that's a nickname they gave me but anyway that, that's just uh they don't even know exactly how everything is going to work but they're so glad uh just because of the history and and what's taken place in the, over the village in the last probably eight to ten years. You know, they had, do have a medical clinic now and they have a sewing clinic and so some things are being established but it took a long time to uh, gain their trust in regards to relationship and now they just know I'm showing up with two strangers and it's like they're my brothers which in a way they are because we, you know, we're friends but uh, they have no idea about that and uh, with open arms and no reservations and with no. a big heart they just welcomed us in with, with the greatest kind of greeting uh, you can you can imagine. It was a, it was probably one of the most uh, heartwarming experiences of my life. Yeah, they're they're very friendly. They're very open, and uh, they'll come and grab your hand. Uh, the language there is uh, Chichewa, and uh, if they grab your hand, they they attach themselves to you. And when you show up in the village again, the same person will grab your hand. It's like they claim you. There's it's called a. Uh, an, uh, a pungo, which means friend, but it really means more than friend uh, because they found an attachment to you and uh, that's something that they don't ever forget. And literally when I go back every other year, every year if I'm fortunate, they remember you. You may not always remember them, but they'll pick you out of a, of a crowd like that. And they come running toward the van or toward the car, whatever you're driving, and they're yelling and they're singing even before you get into the village. Yep. And uh, the singing is they're, they're thanking God above for the people who have come, and uh, they're thanking them for this moment. Uh, the people that greeted us were not just the residents of the village, but the villages around, and they have chiefs that run those villages, and they all had a say in how grateful they were that we were at this one particular <coughs> village, and so they all affirmed us and gave us uh, great thanks and told us how grateful they were for us coming. And so to have uh, the people of the village have the people who are kind of the hierarchy uh, greeting us like that is, is really quite an honor. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And then, um, you know, so, so I think that all wrapped up the, the welcome ceremony, the, the, you know, the, the language barrier, the translating, the stories. Uh, you know, we heard a lot, a really good story about a, a, an alligator. Um, ask us offline for, for that one. Um, you know, that all wrapped up, I want to say, Friday, Friday night. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, so we started day. Wednesday night. Right. By Friday night, we we're we we're taken back to our host house and fed dinner, right. which was amazing. And um, 
you know, here we've got a bunch of pictures of what we ate. It was, it was breakfast and dinner every day. You know, we were taking good care of. Um, so I like to say that was the longest Wednesday we ever had. Um, but the next morning, you know, we right to work. They pick us up. We'd go in. We, you know, we had to go into town. Um, we had to source some source some materials before we could start. There were some things we couldn't ship: batteries, um, inverters, inverters, that yeah. sort of thing. So we went into town and and sourced the batteries and inverters at a shop that they had locally. And you know, once we determined what system that, that they had that would work, um, that's when they realized, hey, we have to sit around you know pretty much all day waiting for them to go around up parts. Yeah, that was a day process <laughs> right there. I just mean, what, park, what happens in Home Depot, <laughs> yeah. you know, what happens in five minutes at Home Depot is, is a half a day excursion through the market. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we ordered the, you know, they didn't keep all the parts in house, so we had to send a guy to go get it. So the guy would go on his bike, you know, because he had a bike that put him ahead of, <laughs> ahead of people. So it's either that or walk. Um, so he'd take his bike out and he'd get a couple inverters strapped to the back and bring them back. Right. And then they would take them out of the box and test them in the store um, in front of you. So you could see that they were working because once you took them out of the store, there's no return policy. <laughs> no. Like, no you, have to, you have to confirm that you bought something that was working. There's no return policy. Um, so we needed seven, in, seven or eight, Six, seven, 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 seven inverters. Yep. Um, and so it just took a long time getting those to and from the shop, uh, along with the batteries. Testing, so it was a, it was an all day ordeal. Yeah, they test, test each one. Correct. So we had to make sure that everything was working before we, we would take possession of it. Um, you know, we were walking around with a bag full of money, like a literally a backpack full of wads of quacha, um, because it's like a hundred thousand quacha to well, uh, seven hundred fifty quacha to one dollar. Right. So. so I mean, we just had a bag full of money. And it was kind of, it was, you know, it just seemed, it didn't seem yeah, right. Walking around the market <laughs> with like, a backpack. No, I, I don't want to walk anymore. Let's just sit, let's yeah. sit here and spend some money. <laughs> um, so we acquired all the material that we needed, uh, the big parts of it there at the shop in town. We went to the market for bulbs, wire. Right. Um, we had to get some, we had to change from DC bulbs to AC bulbs because they, they had some inverter problems. So we had to switch our inverters. We had to do some engineering on site. Yep. The modules we sent, um, we had were uh, 250 watt modules and they're like 30 something volts. So it's a 24 volt system, but over there, everything is a 12 volt system. So that was something that we didn't know ahead of time. You know, here we were excited to ship these panels. We're gonna use them, everything's great. Um, but when we got there, we realized we had a problem with the voltage. So we had to find different inverters that would take a 24 volt panel, um, which caused us to do some different things in as far as we changed the, we changed some DC lighting. Yep. We were going to do some DC loads, but we changed those to AC loads because we had the inverter that could handle that. Um, so there's some engineering that we did in town on site um, that we were lucky enough that they had you know, the equipment to do so. Right. Um, from there, we went to the market. We purchased our lamps, our wire, some straps, some bus, some bus bars. I mean, we're yeah. we're, we were literally creating our own electrical panels on site out of out of copper and tin. Uh, you don't go to the supply house to buy a panel there, you you make it. Right. Um, and, it and, and really we went kind of with, with what the local guy, he had a little bit of knowledge as far as what they do locally. Some of it was a little sketchy, you know, but we wanted to make sure we left it as safe as what we could given the resources we had. Um, you know, some of the conditions I saw there, uh, it really, you know, it, it, for me, I came back with a whole new appreciation for the, for the luxuries I have in my life. Yeah. And it's as little as turning on a light switch or flushing the toilet, um, things that we take for granted every day, multiple times a day, um, they didn't have. You know, when we were working in the village to go to the bathroom, you had to find this little hole in the ground. Yeah. Um, and they had one for guests and one for, that they used. And, and to tell you the truth, I, I, didn't, I didn't get close enough to the one that they used <laughs> to even see, but I, I, I mean, I could tell from where I was. Um, but the ones that we were using, it's just a different experience. Um, you know, no running water, um, you know. Everything was <clears throat> well. Everything was well pumped, so you see everybody can and, that, and that's all done through A2, the, right. the wells, you know, they have aid out there putting those wells in, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, simply like Josh was saying, simple things that you take for granted, uh, shoes on your feet, uh, a shirt on your back. Uh, a lot of these kids, uh, when we go out uh, as a bigger group, maybe in June, we, 
and bring out some other shirts and stuff. And so they come run down the hill, they look like a rainbow. And literally, you know, not even a week later, you know, it's dirty, it's got holes in it. And they, they literally wear those for the next year. That's all they have. And uh, so uh, the conditions are just very primitive. And so the hygiene is uh, not always very good, but they're getting better at that. Uh, we had to teach them simple things like putting a Coke bottle or a two liter bottle outside the bathroom and they learned how to pull the strings so it tips so they can wash their hands because before we had gotten there, not us, but this is years before, they had not understood the importance of that. Uh, simple things like even like malaria nets, they would use them to patch a roof or to catch fish and it, just the education that they needed to say, no, if you put this over your family, they'll stay healthier and they can, they'll be able to work in the, right. um, in the farms a lot longer. I mean, we saw them making bricks out of mud uh, heating them up and stuff like that. So a lot of things, as Josh likes to say, is on fire. And uh, but that's just kind of what they use uh, to kind of get the job done. So it is amazing when you travel back in there, and you're sitting from your perspective how much that changes you a little bit because uh, it's just things that are very impacting. That here locally, uh, you'll never be impacted that way here in your own home. Right. We started working in ABC at the Live Love office on campus. We split up all the product that we had and uh, figured out what exactly we could put and what exactly each install needed. Um, the ABC college ended up getting one solar panel, two batteries, and an inverter. It actually had um, power to, to that specific building. Um, so it was strictly for when the grid goes out, it was grid tied, and the grid goes out over there once a day Easy. for about 20, 10 hours, if not more. Yeah, yeah, it goes out for about 10 hours a day, and they were having hard times continuing working when that happened in their offices. Hey, Josh Farley here, Redline Electric and Solar. We just finished uh, the Live Love office solar panels uh, with our friend, with our friend Alfred. <laughs> Alfred, he's our local electrician, really a great, great help for us. Uh, the panels we used were a 250 watt uh, solar world panel that we had shipped here from America. We had to source, we had to source our inverter and our batteries here locally. Um, what we've got here is what they call a home sine wave UPS system. It's, our, it's acting as our inverter. So we've got a 250 watt panel that's got, we're running a 24 volt system here. We brought it, we've got our charge controller in the ceiling. The charge controller feeds our isolating breaker that'll kill the battery load, and then we've got that coming down to the batteries from the UPS, or from the inverter, comes back to our critical loads. So our critical loads in this building are lighting and a few outlets that they need to, to run their computers. And then what happens is this particular building has grid, so there is grid time, so, but if the grid goes out, you have a small delay before the UPS picks back on. Now we're running on battery power. It's amazing what uh, what these guys are doing with one solar panel. So they really wanted that backup system so that they could continue working and doing what they needed to do to make a difference over there, um, even when the grid was out, which was pretty often. And um, they knew when it was going to be out. Yeah, because they were sharing. They were sharing these. I mean, we saw their their plant. It literally mm -hmm. was a field of. Agreco generators pumping diesel fuel. Yeah, just I mean they're creating their own. They're burning diesel fuel to, fuel to create electricity. And they're pretty much sharing it between cities out yeah. there. So they just decide that one city has had it all day and they shut it down and then they give it Send to it another to city. Else. Yeah, it's it's little stuff like that. It's really humbling and you really feel thankful of what we have here because. That, like like you said, just a light switch, being able to turn a light on and knowing that it's gonna come on and it, it's something that we take for granted, but they well, don't have it all the time. Right, I mean, and, and being able to see somebody's face when the light turns on for the first time, it's just one of those things you can't explain. Um, what else, so we, we did the medical clinic, it was the same, so we pretty much, the the office pretty much was the was the platform to hey we're going to build these systems going to be one panel yep one panel two batteries and an inverter and an ac system um the medical clinic we did the next day um it also got one panel two batteries 
the medical clinic did not was not grid tied. Everything we did other than the office was all off grid. <clears throat> um, so it was just to power so that they had power. It was yeah. at all the villages and and then the gr uh, the girls shine yeah school. Um, just so that they had power. And there was people there that had never seen lights. Kids, kids never seen, you know, lights turn on or even even white people. <laughs> right. Um, which, which is crazy. Zungu. Yeah, uh, Zungu, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, it definitely was crazy. Well, I think there's a lot of things that they can learn from us as a, as a, as a community, as a society. But I, I want to say there's probably more that we could learn from them. Yeah. Sure. Um, just as a community base, um, uh, with the way that they treated us, and, you know, the way that they acted amongst others. You know, I was never, you know, being in the third poorest country in the world, I was never in, fr in fear of my life. I, you know, I never got into a position where I thought, oh crap, I don't want to be here. Um, was the air pollution horrible because they burn everything? Yes. I mean, was it hard for me to breathe over there? I mean, yes. Uh, was was some of the food a little interesting? Yes. Um, <laughs> it was good though. But, good. you know, it was all made, most of it was made with love. I mean, yeah. it was just amazing, you know, home cooked meal and when the when homemade the homemade donuts, homemade donuts, I mean, <laughs> yeah. poppy seed muffins, poppy seed bread. I mean, pretty much when they when the oven went down, they would cook over coals on top of their oven. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just the way the the wherewithal and the resources that they have to to live the life that they do is just amazing. As far as you know, you come back here, if the electricity went out, we would be like, oh sh. You know, now what? Let's go to McDonald's. Like, it just wouldn't happen. In the village, that was all off-grid, and one of the first buildings that we did was a medical clinic. Uh, that's been there for a little while, but it's also houses like a, their community center, so they hold classes there and meetings there. Uh, but they do also have uh, monthly medical clinics that the surrounding villages come to. And so now, with the, uh, the use of the solar power and the inverter for the AC, they can actually start plugging in smaller equipment for uh, medical uses, as well as... Uh, laptops and uh, other other devices that they need in order for record keeping and things like that that they can do at the medical clinic. Also adjacent to that building, uh, I don't know if you saw the video, was uh, the sewing clinic and that's a revenue generating uh, sewing uh, center actually, not really a clinic, but uh, the women there, mostly the widows, uh, when the floods come and wipe out the crops they need another source of income so now they're able to make dresses and shirts, purses and handbags and uh, some other th items I'm sure that they can take to the market themselves. Now they have a way of generating revenue. Next to that building, they have a uh, rec center that uh, um, a gentleman there by the name of uh, Tusha, he runs a sports ministry there. And uh, what's very big in that culture as well is uh, their oral tradition. They put on plays and stories, and so they're able to come together as a community and continue the legacy of, of stories from the past as well as things that are coming up in the future. Also on that property is a uh, hut that uh, houses some of the students. So when they go out there, they have to travel either by foot or by bike or by bus. And so when it gets late at night, it's not really safe to be traveling back into the long, long, long Way or the ABC College. So now they're able to stay out there. Uh, the hut's pretty big. It houses uh, probably at least a dozen people in there. They've got facilities and everything. And so now that's uh, another uh, tool that they can use in the village to continue the work that's uh, hopefully uh, developing uh, the, the community in a way that uh, they have a vision for. That system that we installed was at Girl Shine Academy. Um, it's pretty much a school for girl girls to go to. It's a secondary school um, for girl empowerment through the country. Um, we installed a new system. There's two buildings over there. We installed a new system off-grid. Uh, one panel, two batteries, an inverter to power all the lights around that system. We had to uh, change some engineering. We had to change the light bulbs from DC to AC. We had to do that for that building. There was also a building there that already had a solar array, um, but when it was installed, it was faced south, which in the southern hemisphere isn't optimal for production and they saw that they weren't able to use it in certain times of the day. 
So we decided to do what we could to try to get it more north facing so that it would be able to produce more electricity and they would be, be able to use it throughout the day a little bit, a little bit more. It ran a, a well pump. Well pump, security light. It ran a well pump and a security light and uh, they were noticing that it, it wouldn't work in certain times. So we, we did what we could to make it so that it would work better for them. Yeah, we couldn't leave. We couldn't leave it. We couldn't leave it. Yeah. I mean, what do you what do you do? Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, that was pretty much the end of it. I knew that once we were finished, I wasn't coming home with the tools I brought. It's like, what do yeah. you do? You can't you can't you can't just leave them there without you know. So, um, all of our tools were donated to you know some to Live Love and some to the local electrician, you know, and uh, anything we can do to help help them help themselves, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I came back with half of my clothes, if that, <laughs> maybe just one Definitely, of shoes, definitely easier to come back, yeah, a lot, yeah. Less, lot less to bring home than taking there. Hey, thanks for watching. I want to say thank you to those that help support us, uh, whether it be raising funds or shooting us emails and texts with encouraging words that really help push us forward. If you want to be a part of this, if you feel inspired to be a part of it, Mike, how do they do that? Yeah, you can get online at www.whatislivelove.org. We do a lot of work with the inner city of Chandler here, as well as abroad in Malawi. And I just want to say thank you again. I just want to say thank you for joining us on this journey. It was life-changing for the people in the village, as well as myself, so thank you. All right, see you next time. Bye. My name is Tusha Jona, and I am Redline. I am Fales Tirambo, and I'm Redline. Hi, I'm Tasha Maguire, and I am Redline. Hey, my name is Richard Maguire, and I am Redline. My name is Blessings Chiwambo and I am, I am Redline.